In this video, we're going to explain the answers for task one of the second sample assessment for applied management accounting. So in part A, it asks us to identify what will be the principal budget factor for most organisations. So what do we mean by a principal budget factor? It's the part of the business that's going to determine how the rest of the budget is going to be created. So is there some sort of key limiting factor in our business that will affect everything else? So, for example, we might have limited people in the business. So we might start off with our people budget. And then based on that, knowing how many people we have, we can work out how much they can make and therefore how much we could sell. So it really depends on the nature of the business. But in most businesses, and that's what it's asking us about here, it's going to be the sales demand that will be the limit. Now, we may be able to make lots of stuff, but we don't necessarily have the capacity to sell all of it because there are lots of competitors in the market who are selling similar things. And therefore, people have to choose between us and the competitors. In part B, then, complete the following statement about budget setting. So where a senior manager sets the budget for other departments. So let's think about that. So we've got our senior manager and then below them we'll have the various departments. So we can see that we're starting at the top and we're imposing the budget down on the departments. So that's going to be the top down approach. So well, let's think about the other ones. In a bottom up approach, this is where the departments would set their own budgets and then they'd send it up to senior management for approval. And that's also a participatory way of doing it, isn't it? Because all the various departments are participating in the process. Now for management by exception, that's really not relevant for any of these sort of ideas. So this is where we will just carry on with our business, but you know, react to exceptions that, that are happening. So anyway, the answer to this one is top down and it tells us an advantage of this type of budgeting is that it is, well, top down budgeting tends to be faster because it doesn't include any participation. They're basically saying this is the budget. Here it is for you departments. Let's move with this. Okay, so it's a faster way of preparing a budget because of reduced participation. However, because it's being imposed on the departments, those budget holders may be quite demotivated by it because they have no control over how those numbers were set and it's just being imposed on them. In part C of the question, we need to identify who would be responsible for the following variances. So for our material price variance, well, who has control over that? Let's suppose that we have an adverse material price variance. So that means we are paying for our materials a figure that is bigger than we planned in the budget. Well, who's going to be responsible for that? Well, that will be our purchasing manager who was buying those materials in the first place. And then for our material usage variance, so this is going to occur where we are using more or less materials in our production process. Well, who's going to be responsible for that? Well, that's a production issue, isn't it? Then we have our labour rate variance. So this will be caused if we pay our employees more or less than planned. Well, that's a human resources issue, isn't it? How much we pay people. And then finally, we have our sales volume variance. Well, this is going to be caused when we are, are selling uh, more or less product than we planned in the budget and that's going to be down to our sales team and our sales manager. And then finally in part D of the question we need to identify the appropriate technique used to manage budgetary uncertainty. So where we have a budget and we are changing that to reflect a different volume of activity. Well we'd call that a, a, a flexible budget. So if we have a particular activity based on our actual performance, so that would be a flexed budget. 
So that's where we change the budget for actual activity. But if we're looking at different volumes, then we'd say, well, what would be the profit if we had this? What would be the profit if we had this? Then that would be a flexible budget. The second one then, so where the budget is updated and extended at the end of a time period, well, that would be a rolling budget. Because the idea here, we might have a, a budget, let's say for January to December, but then once January is complete, we will then roll that forward and say, well, look, here is now a budget for February to January. And then when February is done, we then roll that forward. And so here's our budget now for March to February. So we just keep on rolling forward using the actual data for the preceding month to give us a, a more accurate version of what we think is going to happen in the future. Next then, where we have an individual variable and we're going to adjust that to see what happens, well, that's our sensitivity analysis. So we're saying, well, if we change the labour rate, what will happen? Right, what if we change the sales volume, what will happen? Okay, so we're just seeing how sensitive our budget is to a change in the variable. But if we're going to do that with multiple variables, so we're saying, well, what if, if inflation changes by this number? Uh, what if we make these people redundant? What if this happens? What if this happens? So in that case, where we have multiple variants, that's going to be a simulation. Because we're trying to simulate a real world scenario, which is more complicated than a single variable change. 